Did he just toot? It's so bad. Oh, so bad. oh, that was egg omelet soured. <laughs> don't waft it towards me. I don't me. want it. Waft it out, not towards me. Ah. <sighs> Welcome to All Things Internet, a show where we talk about things we've seen on the internet that usually have to do with the internet. And Emily tries her gosh darn it to fact check and track check, check, check and research most things. I am one of your hosts, Rachel Ballinger. I'm Emily Brostaff. And welcome. The dog of the day is Blaze, who just tooted a nasty toot. The smell of a smelly smell of something that smells smelly. Um. All right, Emily, are you ready to give us our facts, figures, and attempt to give us our fundamental rights? Um, I think so. All right. I literally just selected my entire Google Doc, which is like um, 14 pages long, and hit the like delete formatting because some things were like really big and some things were really small. And it just, it pushed everything into tiny little paragraphs. But you know what? If that's my biggest struggle today. That so, was a good one. That was, I'm so sorry. That was genuinely a nine out of 10. That was like, good. do recommend. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, I'm sorry about your struggles. That's okay. Also, how are you doing today? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> I was genuinely being like, the second she gives me a moment, I'm going to say right. it. Right. Yep. Um, I'm doing well. I woke up uh, with full mode of uh, flip mode, which is the app I'm launching on Saturday um, in the Ventura and Santa Barbara County areas. Um. And I woke up just like full of ideas and my ADHD went bet and like just hyper fixated and I don't want to do anything else but focus on that. Yeah. And I, but then I had to wake up and film a brand deal and now I'm here. So like my struggle is I want to work more and by blaze of the day. Bye. He He'll said, I don't want mom to work. I want her to go on hikes with me and give me puppuccinos. So he's mad at me. He wants to sunbathe. Oh, he loves a sun bath. There's for like two hours of the day, I put their dog bed in the sunbeam and they love it. Ugh. Oh, God, he's handsome. He's like a good boy. He's so perfect, except for all of his flaws. <laughs> he sighed like he pays the rent. Yeah. All right. How are you doing? I'm good. Yeah. Uh, it's, okay. That was so <laughs> convincing. You heard it here first, folks. She's good. Good. Yeah. Well, it's been a stressful morning, but, you know, we're here, we're thriving. My Google Doc is small, small. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I guess there could be worse things. There in the could world. be worse I things. Usually been waking up at 830, which I hate because I'm like, I feel like that's too late to start. my Yeah, day. but I will not wake up to an alarm. Can't happen. Won't happen. What? Like I you refuse? Just, no, I just keep hitting snooze. Oh, I take it as, as a light suggestion to wake up <laughs> and I go, no, I'm good. Right. I cannot do it. How does Abby not like smack you until you get out of bed? Well, that's the thing is that's not a nice way to wake up when your girlfriend is like, if you don't turn that uh -huh. off, we will not be together anymore. I am not a nice person when someone's alarm keeps going off and uh, off and off. You I know, will shove you out of bed. Most people aren't. Yeah. Uh, when you're up, when another person's alarm going off and disrupting your sleep, which you yeah. are totally allowed to have. No yep. one likes it. No. Nope. So I, I have to stop setting alarms and then I just naturally wake up at 830. Uh-huh. And I hate it. Yeah. Because I'm like, I got things to do. Right. And I naturally woke up at 7.30 today. <gasps> oh, my God. I was like, oh, I'm full of life and vigor and work ideas. Right. I felt creative and successful. Oh, my. Oh, my Lord. I don't know what got into me. I love that. Mm -hmm. I've seen them um, on TikTok and I kind of want to try it. Because I'm always like, I'm such a deep sleeper and I get jolted. I was going to say sleeping. <laughs> well, yeah, when I sleep. Um, You know, the three hours I get a night. Um, I get jolted awake and when, like when my alarm goes off oh. and that's not a fun way to wake up either. Cause then I wake up no. in a bad mood. I've seen this thing on TikTok, and it's like this lamp that slowly I used starts. to have it. You what? I used to have it. The, the lamp that slowly starts getting yeah, brighter. Yeah, sunrise. Yeah. I used to have it. I, for the life of me, could not figure out how it worked. Got it. <laughs> I mean, I didn't have the instructions. Oh, my ex set it up and then mm. bye bye him. Yeah. So then I was like, well. Couldn't figure it out. Like at 3 a.m., the light would just start going on. And la but the thing is, I love waking up to light. Yeah, when me Abby's too. When not here, I sleep with the curtains yep. open. Yep. I'm like, give me that sun. Give me the yeah. nutrients. Um, but that light just, I couldn't figure it out. I'm sure if you have the instructions. <laughs> yeah, I kind of want to try it because I wake up now before the sun comes up. And so I would like something that 
I was about to say stimulates that. I do not need to be stimulated that no. early in the morning. Imitates that? Thank you. Simulates? Simulates. There you go. I went with anyway. a dumber down version. Um, yeah. So I would suggest that because it was cool. I don't, yeah. I just got rid of it in a wave of I'm going to get rid of all of the things I own. Uh, yeah. I do that every once in a Just a giant purge of everything. Yeah, yeah. I My entire truck was packed to the brim. Joy went with me to the Goodwill and like they wouldn't take things. And we were just like throwing them at them. Like you have too much for us to take. Right. And I was like, take it. Take- and it was good stuff. I just, I didn't want it in my house. After a breakup, you want a yeah. clean start. Yeah. I got rid of so much. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of me too. <laughs> but then also I'm mad at myself because there was some good stuff in there I shouldn't have gotten rid of. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'll keep it and I'll just hide it. And then like once I'm like over the breakup, then if I find it again and I'll use it, I'm like, oh, now this has no emotional attachment. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. I did that. I mean, I did that with a lot. I owned a lot of things. Yeah. But there was just some things where I was like, this frustrates me. Yeah. Or this created a fight. So. Bye-bye. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye. Anyway. We're healed now. Do you want to tell us some news for the day? I sure do. Golly gee whiz. I'm glad we're here together. (laughs) Um, So happy news. Paris Hilton just welcomed her first baby via surrogate. Whoa. Plot twist. I know, right? I had no idea. Was. Nope. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I love watching your mind do that because I do that too. I'll be like, yeah, oh, let's just move on. Um, on Tuesday night, she posted a picture of her hand. I assume it's her hand holding a baby's hand on Instagram. And she captioned it. You're already loved beyond words. And it's been confirmed as a baby boy, but she hasn't talked about um, the name yet. OK. Um, and in an interview with People magazine, she said, it's always been my dream to be a mother. And I'm so happy that Carter and I found each other. I believe they got married last year or the year before. I didn't even know she was married. Oh, my God. Such a beautiful wedding. I only know because um, the photographer that took their photos is one of my photographer friends friends. Oh, I was like, Casey took the photos. Oh, I wish. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my so gosh. she she was sharing all of his work from the wedding. And that's the only reason I knew. Um, but yeah, she said we are. Ex- oh. Uh, there is a worker at my house. Hold on. Oh, sorry. I'm back. There are some people needing to trim trees. That's not a euphemism. Anyway. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, Paris said uh, that her and Carter are so excited to start their family together and that their hearts are exploding with love for our baby boy. Oh, so cute. Love that. Good for them. Yeah. Um, speaking of babies. We have to talk about Kylie Jenner finally revealing her son's new name. Air. 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 Earth. Wind. Fire. Water. Air. (laughs) So bad. We Um, should have come up with a commercial to release the name. I agree. We could have made millions. Yeah. Yeah. Stormy. Stormy, baby. Anyway, um, in in case you missed it, um, Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott welcomed their second child back in February of 2022. So it's been almost a year. And when they initially said that he was born or like they were about to give birth, they said that his name was Wolf. Oh, I was going to be like, wasn't it like Tiger or something? <laughs> bear. <laughs> Actually, that would have been cute. Um, Ooh, yeah. Bear would have been really cute. Yeah. Dibs. I always said, okay, no, I've always wanted to name my kid Bear. Like if I had like a baby boy. Oh, on Dibs. Um, but then someone was pointing out to me that Bear, like you call very large kids gay hairy men they're called bears and so they're like you can't have two lesbian moms and name your kid bear you know I can do what i want she can do what she wants not naming it like unicorn or anything <laughs> a vibe um <laughs> so yeah when he was born almost a year ago they announced that his name was wolf and then a few days later they said mm, psych we hate that name uh but we're not going to tell you the new one so earlier this week when do you think they came up well because didn't someone like trade figure out the, the a different name chris or something yeah so do they not trademark air i don't i'm sure there's absolutely no way they'd announce the name and not have it trademarked like that because that's a good clothing brand name air that is or a like a makeup line yeah oh that's good yeah um so yeah kylie just like a few days ago finally posted his new name in the first ever photo of his face and revealed that his name is air as in billionaire um and the name means or millionaire if you want to be humble (laughs) thousandaire (laughs) i barely pay my rent in air (laughs) um 
The name means Lion of God in Hebrew, but many... So his name has been going viral on social media this week because many fans have pointed out on social media that it doesn't transla- translate well in a lot of uh, languages, including Lebanese, Palestinian, and Syrian dialects, um, because in their languages, air, spelled that way, is slang for penis. Well, there you go. So, yeah, someone tweeted out, um, should someone tell Kylie Jenner she renamed her son Air, which is common Arabic expression for my penis or no? And then someone else tweeted, IDK, what the ruckus is about Air, meaning penis in Arabic. They literally have people named Dick, and that's penis in the same language. Like, Yeah, that's true. You know, because like we have like Richard. Oh, I was going to say William. It is Richard. It's yeah. Really, yeah. That was like a really big back in like the 70s and 80s. If your name was Richard, you'd always go by Dick. Yeah. And if your name was Robert, you'd go by Bob. Nothing makes sense in this world. Yeah. Or William is Billy. Yeah. What are we doing? Can we all just take a moment and be like, why are we this way? Because what? it doesn't make sense. Right. My name's Rachel. I go by Robert. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't go. I'm trying to think of what. Yeah. Yep. You got it. Anyway. Um, so that's interesting. And I'm sure Chris is having a field day with, uh, trying to, I don't, I do wish the they just had never announced the name. What a move. What to a move. never an- announce your child's name or face. Right. That, that's a me. That's a me move. Yeah. That would have like, yeah, that would have been good. Except, you know, some like staff member would have leaked it eventually. I'm surprised they made it a year. Yeah. Maybe they just tell the staff members to call him baby. That's what I would do. Son. You don't get to know the name of my child. Champ. Only my child and I get to know it. Right. <laughs> um, all right. Next. Oh. What? Also, maybe like never. I would just give out a fake name. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be good. Yeah. Yeah, purse. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just thinking of all the ways to mess with the internet. Continue. Right? Yeah. Um, Walt Disney World officially shut down Splash Mountain on Sunday forever forever what yeah um and before the ride officially closed its doors in order to because they're rebranding to a princess and the frog themed ride it's gonna be the same ride they're just changing out all of the like interior decorations well wasn't it like super racist inside it was super racist got it um on board with this change yes so before it closed its doors the very last wave of people they let through the line reached over three hours to wait for the ride no um, and Disney has chosen to rebrand the ride because of how much backlash they've gotten, especially in the past few years for being tied to an old, super racist Disney movie. OK. Um, so according to BuzzFeed News, it's linked to a movie called Song of the South, which is the movie. I had no idea. I never watched this movie, but that's where it is. Yeah, neither you, have I. you know that song? Zippity yeah. Day. Yeah, that's what, I oh my, what a wonderful day. Yeah, everyone knows the song, but yeah, I've no. never seen the movie. No. Yeah. And um, we're all singing it not knowing it's super racist. Correct. Yeah. Like I had no idea. Um, So a movie release, this movie was released back in 1946, and it's about a seven-year-old boy named Johnny who's visiting his grandmother's plantation for an extended stay, and Johnny befriends Uncle Remus, who's an elderly black plantation worker, because this movie is set before the Civil War, so slavery is still alive and well in this movie. Okie dokie. And so he befriends one of the elderly uh, plantation workers, um, or, you know, slave, (laughs) call it what it is. And, yes. you know, the whole movie is just about him, like, listening to this guy's stories and, you know, appreciating the adventures and, like, they... Trying to make slavery not look bad? Exactly. Got it. So it's not about what they put in there. It's about what they didn't put in there. Yeah. Because they... they whitewashed everything. Not whitewashed. They white... heroed it. Yeah. Like, like, the whole film falls back on, like, super racist stereotypes for one. And then it depicts all of its black characters who, again, call it what it was. They were slaves. Yeah. They depict them as subservient and they romanticize the plantation life. So the film obviously took place before the Civil War. It didn't show all the whippings, the malnutrition, the starving essay. Yeah. So they um, one movie critic that he phrased it really well. So he said. Uh, that the film is portraying a utopian world where black slaves and white owners lived in harmony. A harmony, <laughs> yeah, a harmony where the only thing that's clear is that the black slaves are inferior to the white owners, but are content to work the fields anyway. Like it's a choice. Wow. Yeah. So basically, Disney has never released this film on home video or streaming. It obviously came out in 1946, back when 
I'm sure some people cared, but back then when like no one was going to be up in arms about this movie, they just took it for what it was. White people were like, oh yeah, sea slavery wasn't that bad. And you know, right. The black community was like, excuse me. Right. So uh, I, okay, this is going to either make me sound really stupid or it's just going to be a normal question. VHS back then? (laughs) 1946 would that have been only movie theaters or do you I think I do not believe VHS was out then okay so you Google's can... all right she's googling I'm making noise okay it... oh um C- <laughs> v- I'm over making noise VCRs and uh what, what should we call them uh, VHSs uh weren't created until 1975 so you had to go see this in a theater okay yeah okay um so yeah they have never released the video because you know how they're bringing back all the old videos on Disney plus yeah they're like We're- unlocking the vault exactly they said vault is shut never to be opened on this one um so obviously thank god yeah it's long overdue for this ride to be shut down but the disney adults online are going bonkers over this because it's a disney staple staple at yeah, disney like, world it's an icon you go to you go to you got Ma- the matterhorn uh-huh. you got space mountain you got splash mountain and the castle right exactly oh and indiana jones can't forget that one I did forget about that one. Don't. Um, <laughs> That's a good one. It breaks every time I ride it. Love that. <gasps> Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, I went to Disneyland yeah. so much as a child. I can tell you every ride that's there. I think I only went like three times. Only three times. But like, you know, compared you to s- some people. Did you see the video? Wait, no. I don't want to get. I don't want to get. Um, <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, I saw that. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you do too. Um, <laughs> so some people online on eBay are selling what they're claiming to be jars of water from this ride for $25 a pop and allegedly there's an expired fast pass card that has uh for splash mountain on it selling for $5,000 on eBay I am so mad that I didn't keep all of my fast passes or yeah. whatever I'm sure I still have those pictures we bought a few of us like going down the yeah thing. I have a few of those but yeah. that's mm-hmm. yeah and so here's the thing I get that something you love is being taken away, but you can't be mad when it's being taken away for good reason. Yes. Like, because it's, it's hurting, you know, humans. Yeah. And perpetuating like horrible stereotypes. Yeah. Yes. So like, like it is rooted in racism. Let's get rid of that. And yeah. Oh, you're yeah. still going to get your ride. And then, you know, you get a new thing. It's I just redecorated. It. It's redecorated. Yeah. You can sing the song on your own time. I get uh, yeah. a something you love. It's like that brings you comfort and joy and you like things that you know as being taken. But it's because it needs to. Right. For the world. Be a better person. Um, Not a selfish one. Yeah. There was even one mom on TikTok. I'm sure you saw it. She went mega viral because she started crying after she like found out the news. So she recorded herself crying about, you know, it being shut down. And then she admitted at the end of the video, she's like, this ride means so much to me. You have no idea this is going to affect me. I even named my daughter after the ride, but didn't say what her daughter's name was. And so everyone in the comments was trying to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> and so people were guessing that her name was Zippity Doo. Someone said Splashe Mountain. Um, <laughs> Blashton Mountly. Um, and, you know, whatever. So people were making jokes. And then she made a follow up video where she said she named her daughter Briar because it reminded her of the ride's Briar Patch, like in the decor. Oh, yeah. OK. Well, a little better than Splash, Splashy yeah. Mountain. Like I would be if they were just doing it for funsies, I'd be like, oh, that sucks for people who were like, but they're taking it away because it's it's rated and it's rated is rooted in racist past. So correct. Yeah. Move on. Yep. Uh, be upset about something else. Cling on to Indiana Jones or something. There you go. Um, okay. Well, that one's probably going to be taken down eventually. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Space um, Mountain. <laughs> what about the aliens? As soon as they come down and defend their, or speak for themselves. Yes, there you go. Um, okay, the YouTube and TikTok famous Green Brothers, the ones that founded VidCon? Yes, founded created VidCon. and founded. Okay. Oh, also, when I was reading about them, because I was trying to learn a little bit more about them before I wrote this. Did you know, have we talked about this, that John Green is the one that wrote A Fault in Our Stars? Yes, we've talked about this. And yes, I know. This, what? How did I forget? Like, it blew my mind. Yeah. Because I just know him as YouTube, like, jokey around podcast guy. And then no, he wrote they're, this. They're both extremely smart and talented. Yeah. I was reading all of the business stuff they do. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, this whole time, I didn't know who they were until I stumbled on one of 
Hank Green's TikToks because he always posts those sciencey TikToks yeah. where he like answers people's questions. So basically, I thought he was like the new age Bill Nye, mm. like for this upcoming generation. I didn't realize he was already so famous and had such a big platform. I just thought he was like this regular smart scientist guy. Oh, no. He's YouTube, bro. Yeah. So um, they just launched their newest long-term project, and it's called Study Hall. And they've been working on this project for three years, and basically they've teamed, teamed up with Arizona State University to provide online college courses that you can do on YouTube, which is brilliant. Um, what does that mean? So basically, um, well, to start, one of the cooler features about this program is when you sign up for it, it's completely free to sign up. And then when you do sign up for it, the first thing it does is it takes you through this like questionnaire where it's prompting you to think about things and answer things carefully. And at the end of the questionnaire, if like the AI or algorithm, you know, whatever it is that's running this questionnaire decides that it doesn't sound like you're ready for college, it'll tell you that. Or like if you don't need Whoa. to go to college, it'll tell you that. It'll be like, no, you should look into trade school or... or Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm a massive advocate for trade school. Yeah. So this is really cool because I feel like when you graduate high school, when you're 17, 18 years old, you're a child. Like, you have no idea what you're doing. No. I had no idea what I was... I nope. just went because that was what was, I was told is the next step. Yeah. You just do it. I like, literally that's what everyone does. applied as a business major. Yeah. And then I was like, I don't, what would I got to do with that? And then when I got there, switched it to film, hated it. <laughs> Absolutely hated it. And then uh, in mid first year, switched to psychology. And I literally never did anything with that degree. I loved, I loved psychology. I loved learning yeah. about it, but I never did anything with that degree. And if I went back now, I mean, Back then, there weren't social media degrees. There wasn't like yeah. social, like that stuff didn't yeah. exist. Obviously, that's what I'd go back for now. Right. Or I would actually tap into the business world of things. Yes. That, that's who I am now. Or I'd go to a freaking trade school and become a carpenter. Right. Like none of what I did, I would have done. No, you're 18. Your brain still isn't fully developed. You have no idea what you're doing with your life. You've been dependent on your parents your entire life. Yeah. And then you just get shipped off to a college where you're going hundreds of thousands of dollars into debt. To dedicate your life to something that maybe you want to do later. Exactly. So that's why I like am obsessed with this program because it basically gives you suggestions on like how you can uh, do some internships or how you just sh like maybe college doesn't sound for you or maybe you should look at this program. Like yeah. they really dedicated a whole section to make sure that people are taking the time to think about what they want to do. And the other brilliant part about this program is you watch, you sign up, right? Free. You watch YouTube videos on educational courses. I want to say that are filmed and produced by Arizona State. Okay. Because that's who they partnered with. Um, and then once you finish watching the course and doing the coursework on your own um, through these YouTube videos, you can pay extra money uh, or you can pay $25 and you can send that coursework into uh, this program. Who would they team up with? I'll find it in a second. But they teamed up with a, a program also through Arizona State where you can sit for $25. You can send in your coursework and they can send back a grade to you. And if you get a B or higher, you can pay to collect that college credit. So basically, how much do you pay? $400. And most college courses are $1,200 a pop. But there's no S commitment. Yeah. So if you fail, whoopsie doopsie. All you paid was 25 bucks. And yeah. And you also, I think you would know once you did the coursework, if you yeah. did well or not, or you exactly. get halfway through. So you might as well do it. If you liked it, if you want to continue, if you want that to count. Correct. You pay for the money. Exactly. And then you can take. Genius. It's brilliant. And then you can take these course, uh, these credits. And then when you're ready to apply, like if you want to go to a four-year school or like, um, well, I think that's really your only option is if you want to go to a four-year school, you can take these credits and you already have all these credits working for you. Yeah. So. I wonder what the transfer is. Because I remember um, at my university, all the transfer kids complained that yeah half their stuff didn't transfer because the four year like the school they ended up going to didn't accept them yeah so i'm interested in to see how many of the four-year colleges and universities mm -hmm. actually accept the credits yeah because i know a college I'm sure arizona university will take them yeah i'm sure that's where they're getting this big discount from yeah. like only charging 400 i'm sure it's because it's like well, these are guaranteed to be accept accepted by Arizona State. And they're good students that are being accepted. They're all B and A students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who clearly want to do the work. Right. Um, but yeah, if you're just like 
freshly out of high school or if you want to if you're not if you're older and you want to explore if college is right for you yeah take it for free if you're enjoying the course you can stop at any time you're not paying anything if you're if you enjoyed the course turn in your work to see how you did for 25 bucks and then if you want to collect that credit 400 bucks which again is a third of the regular price yeah and then um yeah i'd be interested to see if these are like general courses Like, Mm -hmm. because you know how with every college you have to do like math, English, science. Right. So I'm wondering how many of those they have or if these are very specified courses, like to see if you're interested in a certain subject. Yeah. Um, So we'll see how it develops. But that's really cool. It's incredible. Yeah. All right. All right. I had to change the camera battery and we're back. Let's go. Okay, we have to talk about fashion week. It was epic. My favorite whole thing ever. (laughs) I love. Are we going to talk about? fairies and makeup i love fashion i'm the epitome of it why wouldn't they invite us to fashion week britney spears on my shirt my tummy hurts and i'm being brave about it on my shirt ripped jeans with a hole in it for both of us and white tennis (laughs) shoes why are we so gay i was born this way but no i like women's bodies (laughs) okay boobies but the boobies (laughs) um (laughs) god we shouldn't be allowed to be together. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> okay. So the main show that everyone's talking about took place. I have the urge to sing. Sorry. Me too. <laughs> Me too. I know. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know how to pronounce this. I love waking up at 730. I feel like Good. I'm so much more full of life. There you go. Because you're like so much less stressed when you're able to get everything done that you yeah. need to. Yeah. I was able to work out. Oh my God. I love it. Um, Sorry, did you want to keep talking about the news and things of the internet? Well, maybe. That's weird. <laughs> this isn't just a podcast where I do whatever I want. We just talk about our morning routines instead. Let this- us know down in the comments if you want a whole podcast episode dedicated to that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, we could talk about it for a full hour. We could talk about anything for a full hour. Yes, we could. Um, okay, so the main show took place at Shipperelli's Spring 2023. Wait, what show? Fashion Week. Like, you know how they have, like, different um, runway <laughs> shows? I have no idea what Fashion Week means. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I literally have not looked into this once in my life. From what I'm gathering from watching America's Next Top Model, uh, you oh, know, my entire childhood. That. Yeah, that's all good. <laughs> um, fashion Week, they, a lot of different brands host different runway shows where they show off their collections. Cute. And do they all do it in the same building? No. Okay. Different locations, different dates. It's just, like, the week of runways. Pretty much. Okay, there you go. This out. You got it. You're caught well, up. You just said this party was hosted at. And so I was like, is it one giant party? I was very confused. Well, this was like, I don't know if this was the one that everyone was talking about because so much stuff happened there or if this was like, because you know, at any like festival or anything like that, there's always one main that everyone's there for. Oh, yes. So I don't know if this is like the one main or if it's just like so much drama happened okay. that, you know, whatever. But I'm anyway. it. So it was in Paris, and if you haven't already seen, one celebrity in particular went all out, and I literally cannot was it Doja Cat? handle this. Yeah. She went Jenna Marbles on you guys. She went Jenna Marbles on you guys. <laughs> she really did. So Doja Cat showed up wearing 30,000, I can never say this word, Swartsky? Swartsky. Swartsky. Swarsky, Squarsky. Swarsky crystal Swarsky. Swarsky crystal. <laughs> um, I'm talking from the very top of her head down to her little baby piggy toe. Oh, her piggy um, toe. Oh. Wait, 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 all the way home. Yes, with crystals on it. <laughs> um, so the crystals took four hours and 58 minutes to hand apply. Torture. Uh-huh. And, oh, and she was completely red. So all these crystals were, were hand-painted red, right? So she was wearing, I can't. I don't want to speculate. Uh, allegedly, according to me, it looked like she was wearing <laughs> according a. According to me, <laughs> it looked like she was wearing a bald cap because you know she just shaved her head. But like this was like smooth, smooth. So I'm assuming they put a bald cap on her and then glued the crystals to the bald cap. I mean, that would just be the smartest route to go. Yeah, but every inch of her was red. I like her poo nanny. Her peeper. Allegedly, according to Rachel Ballinger. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm asking. I'm not alleging nothing. Um. So, um, and I'm assuming she was dressed this way to go with the theme of the clothing line that was being displayed that day. And the theme was Dante's Inferno and the Nine Circles of Hell. 
And so I'm assuming she was being dressed oh, she up. She looked hellish. Oh, yeah. So I think she's either being dressed up as like a sexy devil or just to like embody hell in general. I don't really Already know. get our attention and it worked. A props to her. It worked. Round of applause. Mm-hmm. Doja Cat. So the makeup artist who designed the look, his name is Pat McGrath, and he described the look as Doja's Inferno. And people online immediately started roasting Doja because she didn't have any lashes on to complete the look because God forbid you do a look and you don't look feminine doing it. I'm sorry. This woman th- sat through five hours of putting crystals on her body and you're mad she didn't put lashes on? Yes, because she wasn't feminine enough. Because Go suck my little pinky toe and then cry <laughs> wee 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 all the way home. Are you kidding me? Yeah. They were making jokes about how they wish Doja had saved some of the crystal glue for putting on lashes. So, of course, Doja saw these comments because she spends her entire life online, which I'm obsessed with. Yes. And um, she decided to give the people what they wanted. Um, So she went on Instagram and she said, well, why didn't you say so? If lashes are what you want, then lashes are what you'll get. See you at Victor and Rolf, which was the next fashion show she was going to be at. Okay. And she showed up to that runway dressed as a fancy man in a pinstriped suit to kind of give the middle finger to people who were saying she wasn't being feminine enough. But um, she used fake lashes, like like (sighs) fake lash strips. Um, and glued them as eyebrows. I love her so much. And a mustache. I love her so much. And a soul patch. I love her <laughs> so freaking much. So she took fake lashes and made facial hair out of it. I love her so much. It was so good. It was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then also awkward side moment from Fashion Week. Kylie Jenner showed up to the show wearing this, you know, really pretty sleek black dress. But then she had this giant life sized faux lion head attached to her shoulder. It literally looked completely real. I saw a picture. I thought it was real. And I was like, "Mm, there's no way that can be real, though, because the Internet would. Yeah. 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 She like credited the people that spent the time building it out of materials. And like it was very much fake. But, you know, she showed up, her and Doja, stars of the show, they actually end up sitting down right next to one another. I love this. It was like, you know how, like, you always have the one friend that dresses really sexy and then the one friend, like, for Halloween, you got, like, the sexy. I'm the unsexy one. Yeah, and then you got. I'll make it funny. That was Doja and Kylie sitting right next to each other. Doja's just sitting there as, like, a big red crystal lobster. And then Kylie. (laughs) A red disco ball, really. Yeah. And then Kylie's sitting there in this, like, sexy dress with this lion head on it. Um, but when she was sitting there, everyone was taking photos of them because obviously they were like stealing the spotlight, yeah. you know, and then one of the runway models walks down in the exact same dress Kylie's wearing and the look with the on lion head? with the lion head. <gasps> so apparently this dress was part of a collection that wasn't supposed to be released until next year. And I don't know what got messed up in translation, but I think Kylie thought this wasn't going to be released until 2024, but it was part of the 2023 collection. And so she wore it to the show, but it was part of the collection. Oh, I'm sorry. Wait a second. The, a dress with a lion head attached is part of a design collection being released to the public? This is also something I had to wrap my head around. Fashion week is not meant to display items that people are going to be able to buy. It's meant to be a statement on what is going to be popular or relevant that year. And it's meant to be an artistic statement. It's a vision board. It's a vision board is what fashion week is. It's a vision board. Mm -hmm. It's a vision board. Okay. All right. Yeah, we are. Because every time I'd see fashion shows, I'd be like, who? What common person is going to wear this? Yeah. And then so then I started like researching a little bit more and then basically learned it's a vision board. Wow. Yeah. All right. Good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. So anyway, Kylie looked like she wanted to die uh, because, you know, well, one of us is going to have to change um, and it's not going to be the runway on the model on the runway. Well, I can't believe that the designer because the designers know who's going to be wearing their dress. Yeah. Both on the runway and off. I'm wondering if I mean, again, this is very much allegedly, but I'm wondering if it was used as a ploy to create um, hype, hype, Uh, not hype, but like attention attention thank you yeah like they wanted drama so that people would talk about their brand and their fashion line but wow someone's getting fired because yeah you know chris jenner's not gonna let that fly. no that is so embarrassing it's so embarrassing it's not but for them it is for yeah they think it's embarrassing right 
So when I wear the same clothes as someone else, I'm like, <gasps> matchy. Right. I'm like, oh, let's take a picture together. <laughs> Kylie Jenner literally was like, oh, I, yeah, I'll post a picture of her face on the YouTube video. I love it. OK. Um. OK. And then the Internet is all up in arms this week because the Tarte influencer trip, all the vlogging material and Instagram posts just got released for that. Um, so last week, several TikTok influencers were flown out to Dubai to promote Tarte's new product launch, which I want to say was a foundation. Um, and this included people like Meredith Duxbury, who has 16 million followers, Alex Earl, 4 million, you know, just a bunch of big name. I'm not in the beauty world. Yeah. I was about to say, I, I, I don't make up, so I didn't know who these people were. They're probably amazing. Yeah. And I couldn't attempt to even do one thing that they can do i know no 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 um, i applaud them yeah but i did notice that they didn't have like i mean it makes sense because it's a makeup brand but like i didn't see like james charles or like nikki tutorials or like the people we would know because this newest well i'm gonna say all those ones are have a very canceled history not nikki tutorials Yes. Oh, you're right. Nikki Tutorials. Yeah. Sorry. I thought you, for some reason, I heard Nikki Tutorials and heard Nikita. Oh, oh, oh. Nikki Tutorials. No, she's squeaky clean. Yeah. She's a wonderful human. So maybe that was it. But I was thinking maybe they invited TikTokers instead of YouTubers because oh, yeah. this new generation is about TikTok. It's about TikTok. So, um, of course, all of these creators were vlogging and Instagramming the entire trip start to finish. And Tart spent a pretty penny putting this trip together. Yeah. Um, you said Dubai. Yeah. So first, they were all flown first class on Emirates. <gasps> My dream. Uh-huh. Oh, I dream. If you don't know, Emirates is the most, it has the most expensive first class tickets in the world. I want to go so bad. Yeah. Um, all right. Barstool sports blogger Jack McGuire broke it down and he said, if you want to fly Emirates from New York City to Dubai, it's going to cost around $22,000. And on top of that, all of them were allowed a plus one. Yep, I was going to be like, all of those people at that status have an assistant. Yeah, so... All right, let's get into the beauty world. Oh, I, right? Let's do it. We can. We could probably do it. We could do it. It's not that hard, it's right? It's not you that hard. Put makeup on your face and film it. <laughs> Meanwhile, I tried to put on one of my fake lashes this morning and squeeze an entire bottle of eyelash glue into my eye. <gasps> I had to use a Q-tip to get all the eyeliner out of my eyeball today. <laughs> I still use CoverGirl powder foundation and a brush from six years ago. So we could probably do it, I think. Yeah, we got this. My skin isn't dry and flaky because I don't have the right moisturizer or night cream. That's fine. Don't worry about it. I think we're good. We got this. Yep. (laughs) Um, So if they invited 50 influencers plus a plus one. So that's 100 people. That's 100 people that were flying $22,000. Were the plus ones first class? Do you know that? I don't know that. Because plus ones could definitely be at the back of the bus. Oh, I could see them doing that. Yeah. Yeah. But that's at least 50 people at $22,000. Yeah. You know, around there. Um, And then once they got to their destination in Dubai, of course, they were all showing off their villas at the Ritz Carlton, which the rooms at the Ritz Carlton are so in Dubai are so expensive. They don't list the prices online. Oh, you know, some place is expensive, like too expensive when Mm -hmm. they don't even let you know the price. Yeah. You have to call and speak to someone to even see if they'll like allow you in and then they'll (gasps) tell you the price. Yeah. Uh. So, a dream of wonders. I know. And then, of course, they were given beauty products, clothes, gifts. They took them on tons of excursions. Yeah. Um, and so according to Time, some people took it upon themselves to investigate how much money Tarte spent on this trip. Um, and a lot of people were mad because they were seeing this as tone deaf because, like, the United States were on the verge of a recession. And so they're like, we're literally about to go into a huge recession where people are going to starve and be kicked out of their homes. And you're spending, I want to say... Where did I put it? Oh, they think it was a few million dollars to take these in, like easily. So, but here's the thing for me. Um, businesses are going to spend a mass amounts on marketing, whether you realize it or not. Yes. A single commercial yes. costs millions of dollars. Yep. So for them, they just got a bunch of mini commercials yep. plastered out all over TikTok. That are going to reach more people. That are, yeah, are going to reach more people and the demographic they want. Yeah. Other than just putting a commercial like so any commercial you see running during the Super Bowl costs them 20 million dollars. Oh, yeah. Th- this said 30 million for a Super Bowl commercial. Yeah. And it's going to reach people that don't care about makeup. So I know it seems ridiculous because you are seeing exactly what's going on. Yeah. But that is what massive companies pay for branding and marketing. Yes. And like that's why I'm like, OK, yeah. And also now these people, I don't, I don't know. I just I'm like that. 
that is marketing. That's what you pay for marketing. That's what that was my opinion too. Like instead of taking that thirty million, or like let's just even say let's be super nice and say they only spent six million on this trip instead of buying a few. No. <laughs> oh, they also had to pay the influencers to go. Um, the founder of Tart came forward and said that they did not pay oh, for cool. them to go because the trip was just yes, the payment. Yeah, you know the payment. Experience. Okay, yeah. Um, but let's just say they took that five, six million and spent it on billboards and TV commercials. This new generation does not watch TV. Yeah. And you like, guys would have not blinked an eye on that, like or, uh, about how much they spent on that. Right. Exactly. But because it's all being displayed online, it's like this big deal. But this is, I mean, as much like what, what's it, what's the phrase? Um, any pu- bad, pu- all publicity is good publicity. Yeah. Even if it's bad. Yeah. So, because this is doing exactly what the, the tart wants is yeah. the people that are mad that it's tone deaf. They're still talking about it. The people yeah. that are not mad are seeing everything plaster all over their for you page and now yeah. they're buying stuff. So, and, uh, the hashtag trippin with tart has over 140 million views and hashtag tart Dubai trip has over 20 million. Like I don't really see anything wrong with it you they created a new product they needed to get it out there and they paid to get it out there i mean yeah i mean of course they could have done it more eco-friendly and you could have done it this and that yeah if i'm just saying like if they had made a commercial no one would have cared yeah and it would have cost probably more money yeah, and reached less people. And they reached less people, They yeah. were smart about it. So I kind of don't have a problem with this. That's just, it. I, I feel like that right there was just people wanting to be angry because they want to be angry or they want to, or they were just like upset that like they don't get to do those things. Yeah. Is my thought process with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you guys can get mad at us for that if you want. Like, obviously, well, they should spend their money on, you know, starving people. They're, how you do you think they that? how do you think they develop those charities they yeah. have to make money in their base company and then yes. they can branch out and give money away yeah and also like you could say that about literally every everything. company if on everything yeah like that, yeah I'm, if you want to get mad look into their taxes do yes that. we can talk about that another time yes are their taxes going to this, like this are, was not the thing to be mad about yeah i don't think i don't think so either and, but if you disagree you can yeah. politely tell us in the and this comments. is coming from two humans that are very jealous of this trip oh yes a thousand percent. and will never ever achieve anything to this matter we're manifesting we're manifesting we One are day we will see an emirates airplane what is it called Emirates. Emirates, yeah. We, we will see, see it, it from maybe outside of it. Flying way above. <laughs> <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um, all right. It's a little bit of shorter news. Yes, please. Oh, God. Panic at the disco will be no more. So Brendan Yuri revealed on an Instagram post that the brand is calling it quits after seven albums together. Um, just because? Well, I think he's about to have a baby. Yeah, they're just old, though. Yeah, it's just like they've done it the i every time i read their name i go panic at the disco at the disco (laughs) yeah so i mean i mean that's fair like they're just older yeah i mean it's sad because i love their music and i think they're an incredible band and they've they've put out some great stuff but like i get it settle down give them 10 15 years when the kids are older and then they'll want to like reunion tour yeah (laughs) yeah um andrew tate has been complaining recently that his prison cell has oh. cockroaches lice and bed bugs oh no Thoughts and prayers. big boy has big scary issues um he sent an email to his followers on his website and he highlighted that his prison cell has no light <gasps> and bleak conditions oh. he wrote i will send you my daily lessons from an unjust imprisonment they are trying to break me throw me inside a cell without light cockroaches lice and bed bugs are my only friends at night oh uh, okay ew um <laughs> in who are his friends during the day right <laughs> <laughs> in times of hardship do not forget your manners they are your trying- manners your manners he's saying he's still being nice to the prison staff even though they're treating him poorly is the prison staff all male <laughs> wouldn't you know it <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Oh, and this this last line's poetic. <clears throat> They're ready. trying to break my iron mind with unjust imprisonment. They can't break me. I'm gonna put that on a t-shirt. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Inspiration right there. That's what I'm saying. Inspiration. All right. I'm for kn- getting jailed for sex trafficking. Yep. 
Aww. We should probably start like a GoFundMe or something. Uh, yeah, just you know, so we can ha- maybe like send him food for him and his nighttime friends and his little cockroaches, little cockroach, red lice, <laughs> bed bug lice, whatever the frick it is. Happy lice, happy life. No, that was bad. Anyway, um, <laughs> okay. Um, so this one, I know we said that we are not a drama channel. We're a news reporting, okay? But this was juicy. And I'm just going to tell you what I saw on the video. And then we're going to leave it at that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. You're going to find it. You're going to find it. Um, so you know how we touched on Sarah Shower and Brittany Broski, Kombucha Girl. And yes, they had their podcast split and mm-hmm. seemed to be unhappy terms. Yes, it was. It ended very suddenly. Loved their podcast. Ended very suddenly. The podcast was doing very well. OK, OK, OK. Neither of them came forward. But Sarah was making some. She was like, I'm going to tell it. Yeah. I'm going to get it. But then she never came forward and, and said anything. Said, mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Brittany was like. PR said no. Yeah, it's like, My manager said no. <laughs> um, and then Brittany was just basically keeping silent, but then alluding that it had just had to do with business, not about any drama. Yeah. Well, Brittany Broski loves a good live. OK. Oh, she loves. Oh, and lives are where you That's slip up. Dangerous. Uh, I dangerous. keep my little mouth shut. Yep. So she loves a good live. And when she was on live, she decided to call um, drag queen Trixie Mattel. Right. Oh, but- you can't be certain of what other people are going to say when you are live. Uh huh. Well, and she didn't tell Trixie that Trixie was on live with her. Why would you not do that? I guess it just doesn't occur to some people. Um, and so okay. they were having a conversation. It was funny. Everyone in the comments was enjoying it. And then at the end of the phone call, again, because Trixie had no idea. Not her fault. Tri- tri- not her fault. Trixie said, I'll have to call you back sometime later this week so I can get the official tea on Sarah. <gasps> and then Brittany panicked, hung up the phone, was scrambling. You could see she was like, like flustered. And then everyone in the comments was like, oh, there it is. Yeah, like, like there is tea. Yeah. And so everyone was like, what's the tea? What's the tea? What happened? Did you have drama? Is there a falling out? Are you still living together? You know, da, yeah. da, da, da. and she basically tried to like very much sweep it under the rug. And she's like, there's no drama. What she meant by that was like, you know, she wants to catch up on what Sarah and I are doing with our lives and like very much tried to like cover it up. Oh, girl. So, lives scare me so much. Yeah. Because it's yeah. even something as simple as someone like accidentally just saying anything. They're not like not that yeah. they're not supposed to, but it'll just like cause iffy drama or whatever. Yeah. Like there's so many times where I'm on live with you and I'm like, oh, mm, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like we're doing anything bad or keeping massive secrets. It's just like it's just stuff people don't need to know yeah. or like they won't understand. Or like yeah. sometimes I accidentally almost say little dog's name. Yeah, it's just like, like stuff. It's just like there's some things we keep private. So like lives scare me because you literally never know what's going to happen. Right. And then it, people are recording. Yeah. And they're not going to forget. But it's on the Internet. It's on the Internet forever. Yeah. So. So I'm. Doopsie. This just happened very recently, so I'm I'm interested to see what happens. It's none of our business, but we're so interested. Yep. Um. Okay. Last short news is TikTok officially confirmed that its U.S. employees decide what goes viral. So it's not due to well. Okay. Let me let me backtrack a little bit. Basically, TikTok U.S. TikTok employees have the ability to boost videos when they feel necessary. So if there's a new celebrity that's just joined, if there's an influencer that they're trying to push that they know will do really well. That is why there is one person who I will remain nameless. The amount of times I have hit not interested Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. they keep popping up and I literally cannot stand their TikToks. Mm -hmm. Never met them in person. Mm -hmm. Sure, they're a great human literally cannot stand them yeah and every time i get on tiktok yep. i have never watched any of their videos full through nope. i have hit uninterested yep i don't want to know anything about them mm-hmm. it's because they do really well on tiktok because tiktok keeps pushing them yeah i was like there's no way that this many people are actually interested or think this human is funny they, they must have an end on tiktok yeah this confirms it for me yeah. So they said once this like leaked out, they tried to do a little bit of like damage control. And so they. Oh, no, we didn't do that. Yeah, what? No. Eh. 
<laughs> um, <laughs> so they claim that only 0.002% of videos on your FYP are chosen this way. But you know that's a very much underestimate, allegedly. Yes. Um, but they said that their employees can sidestep the algorithm and claim that they only do this when they're trying to diversify the content on your For You page. That also makes sense why this person keeps popping up. Yes. I don't like it. Yeah. So that's interesting. Um, and no, I can't block because I can't block anybody big on no, TikTok. No. Uh, yeah, you got to play nice. I have to play nice with everybody. Yeah. And again, I don't know them as a human, so they might be great as a human. Yeah. And I don't want to block a great human. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. You ready for some good news? Yes, please. Okay. So we have to start by talking about the TikToker who is single handedly going around and saving all of these restaurants in Las Vegas. Oh, this boy. Human. Yeah. Man? Man? Male. Male. Um, his name... <laughs> His name is Keith Lee. Keith Lee. Um, Keith Lee. And he got famous on TikTok visiting restaurants around the Vegas area, picking up their most ordered or famous dishes, and then honestly reviewing them. And, I love an honest review. And I trust what he says because I've watched his reviews, and there are several times where he gets something. And like, because when he goes, he'll get like anywhere from like five to 10 items. Okay. So he can make like a lengthy video out of it. And like the first three or four, he'll be like, oh, that's an eight out of 10. That's a nine out of 10. And I'll be like, OK, whatever. But then he'll get to something. And he'll be like, that is absolutely a zero out of 10. So like, love it. He is honest. Yeah. Um, and he said he's gotten so big now that he actually has to wear disguises when he goes to pick up food because he wants to get the honest food. Yeah. He doesn't want them giving him something special or treating it differently or treating yeah. him differently because he also reviews the customer service. So, oh, smart. Yeah. So now he, he wears these disguises. Um, well, once he started getting big on TikTok, obviously people around the Vegas area started DMing him, begging him to come to their restaurants. Yeah. And, and, you know, he just kind of does his own thing. He doesn't he doesn't do this. I mean, I'm sure he does it for the TikTok views and the TikTok money. But he, yeah. he, he, he doesn't do it like he's never paid by these restaurants to do it. Yeah, okay. He doesn't get anything from them out of it. So he would just kind of ignore the DMs. But then this one guy reached out to him and it was the son of this. I want to say it's like an Italian pizza shop in Vegas. Okay. And they were on the brink of closing. Okay. Like they were about to be foreclosed. They were super behind. They were about to um, declare bankruptcy. He reached out to the guy and he was like, literally, I would stake my life on this being the best. I want to say it was Italian food you've ever had. I think I thought it was pizza. Pizza. I remember seeing a headline because yeah. you DM'd it to me. <laughs> yeah. It was like pizza wings, yeah, garlic yeah. knots, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and he was like, I would stake my life on my dad's food being the best. This genre. This genre food that you've ever eaten. Um, and he was like, please come and pick it up. Um, you know, we'll, we'll give you right fresh off the grill. Like you can send someone else to come pick it up so we don't know it's you. And then please review it on your TikTok. And so he went, picked it up. Um, I want to say they recognized him, but only after they handed him the food. Okay. So he didn't announce that he was coming. He just yeah. walked in, brought it home. He did a review. And there were some stuff on there where he was like, eh, this is a six out of 10. But then he got to these um, like lemon pepper wings. And he was like, these hands down are the best wings I have ever eaten. In this restaurant, once his TikTok, um, he posted the TikTok, the restaurant went from bankruptcy to making over $30,000 in just 24 hours. Holy macaroni. Yeah. So now that's kind of what Keith's new thing is, is he finds the he's basically like doing a, a nice Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. So he's like going to these struggling restaurants and he's picking up their famous stuff and then he's reviewing it on TikTok. And if it's good and, you know, he posts a good review, they're making yeah so much money yeah because now people want to go visit and try the stuff that's so good. Yeah. So look at him. Wow. Using TikTok for good. Love it. Yeah. Um. Okay, according to Good News Network, Dr. I'm going to say Quayne, it's K-W-A-N-E. Quayne. Quayne Stewart, um, who's known as the Street Vet, founded his, founded his nonprofit called Project Street Vet back in 2020. And they take donations and volunteers out into the streets and more specifically into Skid Row in L.A. OK. Um, and if you don't know what Skid Row is, it's basically this like a few blocks of street in downtown L.A. that um, it's where the majority of people experiencing homelessness set up their encampments. Yeah. So it's just blocks and blocks and blocks of tents and tarps and, yeah. you know, people who are struggling. And so he takes volunteers um, out onto those streets and he goes into the homeless encampments and he provides free medical care for their pets. Oh, yeah. 
that's something I always think about when I see someone experiencing homelessness and I see they have a dog with them. Yeah. I'm always like, oh, I'm like, how do they feed that dog? Yeah. Like if that dog needs medical care, how do they take care of it? Like it just it worries me so much. We know how often we go to the vet with our dogs. And, and like I can barely afford it. Like, yeah. you know, um, and so he says that last year they were able to help nearly 600 animals receive medical care. Um, they provide free exams, vaccines, flea medication supplies, and they even like do like little educational programs where they teach, um, you know, the, these people that they're helping how they can help their pets and keep their pets healthy with like the limited amounts that they have. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, and they partnered with animal clinics and they opened up pop up clinics where the homeless population can bring their pets for more extensive medical care. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So he's doing great. Wow. Um, that's nice. Yeah. All right. We got five minutes if you want to do another happy thing or you want to ask a question. You want to do a question? Sure. Okay. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. We got some good questions sent in. Also. Oh, I love it. Yeah. Feel free to DM me questions that you want to know or that you want me to ask. Um, okay. This one was weird. I'm just curious. What is the most bizarre wrong number text or phone call you ever received? Um, I haven't really. Really? I like, I'll get, I also, when someone I don't know calls or texts me, um, I don't respond or I don't answer. Yeah. So like those people that have like those weird interactions, I've never really had one of those. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. I had, um, my ex-wife and I went to a couples counselor, uh, back when we lived in Virginia before we got married, just to make sure everything was good to go before we got married. Whoopsie. What? Um <laughs> and um she was like I want to say like 65 when we saw her and then 2 years later so we hadn't spoken to her for 2 years. We went to maybe four sessions with her. 2 years later, she started leaving voicemails on at the time my wife's phone talking about how much she missed her and wanted her to come back home and um basically what we think happened is she was getting dementia or Alzheimer's or something. And she was mistaking my ex-wife for an ex-lesbian lover of hers. Oh. Because she would leave these like longing voicemails. They, they're both, they both had the same name or something. Yeah. And it, oh. was, it was weird. That but, is fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, I never got anything like that. All right. Well. Um, Not that I remember. Ooh. I mean, I probably have. I just don't remember it. It wasn't memorable. No, it didn't leave an imprint on me. Yeah. Okay. Well, then let's do what is something that strangers often incorrectly assume about you? how to pronounce my last name um ballinger ballinger uh and then incorrectly assume it could be like personality they or... often think that um abby and i are related no they always think we're sisters we even got twins once what yeah that's weird um that i mean you have it's not an rbf but you have a very stern look when you Colleen you're... says I give off male energy, straight white male energy. She says to me last night, and Emily does not deny it. <laughs> <laughs> she said I was hanging out with our JoJo last night, and we were talking about just life and stuff. And I was like, yeah. And I was saying how, like, um, like she was like, you don't have any... Like, she was talking about my friend group. And she's like, you give off male, confident, like, white, straight male energy. And she's like, that's what you give off initially. Because that's not yeah. who I am. I'm no. very I'm like in tune with emotions and I'm right. a woman. I'm very much a woman. But that's the initial energy I give off. And yeah. I've even had friends throughout my life that were like, oh, I was scared of you when I first met you. Really? Very intimidated. I thought you were going to beat me up. Oh, my God. And I've never hit a human in my life. Yeah. So. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you are very like tough and stern like externally but i'm a giant softy yeah and then as soon as you start having a conversation you're like the nicest bubbliest yeah i'll make mean jokes once i get to know you and i know that you can handle that sense of humor but that's right. it yeah huh interesting what about you um that you're straight oh my Allie Belair's uh, could not figure out if emily was gay or straight the amount of people recently that have assumed i'm straight get gayer em a Get a freaking chain or something. Oh, my God. All I do is post my girlfriend on my Instagram. And people well, are like, Where, where's your boyfriend? I'm going to get you a chain. 
Thank you. And some stud earrings. Ooh. Get some. I would love that. All right. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you guys for joining us. Please remember to follow us and like us. Uh, rate us if you can. It actually helps us out a lot. And uh, yeah, this has been fun. If you have any other things you'd like us to talk about or questions, please DM Emily. I love you guys. Thanks for being here. I was just going to say you can say you love them too. I love you. That's it. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of All Things Internet. Please make sure to like and follow our podcast on whichever platform you're currently listening to it on. And make sure to follow us at Podcast ATI on Twitter, where you can ask questions and get the latest updates on our show. We love you. Thanks for listening. I'm Rachel Ballinger, and this has been All Things Internet.